Welcome back to Tech, Tesla, and Trends. Today, we're going to discuss universal basic income. In this particular episode, we're going to discuss income sources. Six different sources that I can see and can think of, and I would welcome your commentary and input on this. From my perspective, I'm not looking at this as a regressive tax-based. What I'm looking at are actual secure ways that we as a society have value built in where a fee can bring in value to the common whole. And the reason for that, the overall system that is built, it exists for the good of all. It has laws, it has order and structure, it has an overall functioning capability. This is what makes a sound long-term basis for that income collected for the universal portion of that, which is to everyone. Looking at what systems exist, few that I'm aware of that actually is functional long-term, that has its basis in commonly held assets, and that is the state of Alaska's permanent fund dividend. That's based off of oil and mineral rights. Individuals cannot own those rights within the state of Alaska. As such, they are held by the state in the name of all Alaskans. That is an asset that is owned universally by all. But looking at this, it prompted me to dig deeper into what other income sources would be available if this were more broadly applied from a cultural perspective. As the Tesla bot comes online, the robots have come and taken all of everybody's jobs. Now, I'm not entirely a believer in that particular line of thought because, number one, as I've mentioned many times, this, this right here, is scarcity. You are very scarce as an individual. You have a unique set of tools and skills. So I don't believe that we will be completely wholesale replaced by robots. Robots have their place. And yes, AI is likely to think faster and operate in different ways than we are capable of. Yet, everything that AI has created, it is based off of that which a human being has created and and that is for better or worse one of our current capabilities creativity so looking forward I have laid out six different uh, income sources that I can see that are available number one is mineral wealth Number one is mineral wealth. Number two, property registration. And in my view, property tax is immoral. And the large reason for that is one can never own the land upon which they live if property can be taxed. It is a theft mechanism by government. That is why property tax is immoral in my mind. So, how would a property registration process work? Well, each piece of property would have a patent that is unique to that particular piece of property. The laws and systems that govern it make that fee a one-time fee, and it enables for good, clean, clear deeds of trust to enable transfer of property in an orderly fashion. And it also pays for the system. This should always be the case. There should never be a system that doesn't pay for itself. Because the common whole is actually subsidizing. Usually that is at a loss through taxation. And that shouldn't occur. All of these systems that I'm discussing here are seeking to eliminate taxation at its foundation. So then when it comes down to it, the third type is the use of a banking system or the stock exchange. Each time 
we exchange or engage in commerce in that particular fashion, we are utilizing a system of common good. And as such, we should participate in the maintenance thereof. And that should be something that occurs regardless with every sale, be it fractional or whatever the, the, the specified amount needs to become in order to make that system uh, functional and independent and also profitable. This makes sense. So the use of a commonly held system of exchange, that is another area where I see the potential for income to be generated for the common whole. The fourth is use of non-criminal judicial system fees. You incorporate or whenever you utilize the system for whatever purpose that's non-judicial, this should have a fee associated because you're utilizing the system that exists for the common good of all. And again, all systems that exist for the good of all should be at bare minimum break even. But I also believe at a fundamental level, no system that is break even is ever functional. There should be at least a, a one to four percent margin that is associated with a particular organization at a bare minimum. This maintains its functionality and it maintains its overall ability to operate. The fifth one that I see is utilizing the internet as a point of sale, half a percent for each transaction deducted from the sale. Ideally, this should occur seamlessly in more of a blockchain. This should not be a substantial burden upon the entire system, but it should be something that is at a background level supporting the overall use of the system. This could technically be considered a tax. As such, maybe the one area where we're, we're looking at that, but that's there's value added here in this transaction. The existence of the system is what provides for the ability of the system to transact and to provide value for both buyer and seller. Again, the system should be profitable. Now, looking at the final one, this is prohibitive in, in my view, but it is a pollution fee. And there's multiple schemes that exist today. So I believe it should mirror the mineral wealth structure fee, but in a mirror content. That which you are leaving behind or extruding into the atmosphere or into a common water needs to be accounted for. And the restoration thereof of that resource to a usable good by the common universal whole is necessary. This is going to be one of the most controversial of all of those items, but it is also something that I believe should exist. Because if we are to be stewards of that which we have, we must account for waste. Waste is destructive not only to the production aspect, but to the overall common whole of the resources that we, as a group, are stewards of. I see this as a potential for these six components, the mineral wealth, oil and gas, and everything there else, the pollution fee portion, interacting with that as a second portion, uh, then the property registration aspect of that to ex enable the exchange of property, the use of a banking system as an exchange system, the use of the non-criminal justice system, and then the use of the internet as a point of sale. These are all areas that as a whole provide for the opportunity for income those systems utilized for the good of all should have transaction fees associated with them because they are at their core for the betterment of all and their existence enables the betterment of all. The funding of those resources should be burdened 
by all who utilize them. And looking at how well the permanent fund dividend has done over the years, those fees, if properly invested and managed by a group of well-informed investment portfolio types, would be more than sufficient to build out a long-term financial plan that would make a lot of sense to have modeled off the investment perspective, at least, of what the permanent fund dividend in Alaska has accomplished. We'll say nothing of the political insanity that happens when you allow government snows under the tent. As many who are aware of what's going on in the state of Alaska where the permanent fund dividend is concerned will definitely notice. That being said, I am interested in what other income potentials there are that exist. Ideally, we're not looking for taxation. We're looking for common benefit out of usage. Please comment and I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'd also appreciate some feedback on where you think the holes are in this system. Because long term, as a society, we do need to come up with a better process for handling universal basic income. It is something that makes sense and could eliminate the inane insanity that is taxation around the world, and most especially within the United States. I'll see you in the comments below. Have a good night.